time for another episode of Getting Dirty with Glenn. Uh, I wanted to share one of the gardens that Cheryl and I renovated about five years ago. Started renovating. It's an ongoing project. It's an old home uh, in the Milwaukee area on Lake Michigan. And the clients like to sit on this, this the roadside, um, and watch the traffic. Uh, not the traffic, but there's a lot of people that walk on here. They know their neighbors. It's a great active community. Um, so there's no hedges here trying to block people out like there are in a lot of the other homes on this road. Um, but Cheryl and I started renovating this, I believe in 2018. Worked on the gardens for three years and Cheryl was diagnosed with uh, cancer so we backed off and I didn't work at this property at all last year and now uh, the clients were nice enough to invite me back to care for the gardens again so that's what I'm doing let's give you a little tour turn the camera around here all right this is the garden from the road um, they just had turf and everything in here uh, there wasn't any color at all which is common around here but we use a lot of hosta this is Summer Beauty Alley, and you've seen this in some of my other gardens. This will have purple flowers early uh, in the summer, and then offer interest all summer. And then we got catmint. Catmint is about a week away from getting cut back. I usually cut catmint back about two or three times a year, depending on the weather. But I'll cut it back to about seven, eight inches tall, and by 4th of July, it'll be just like this, gorgeous again. We got some. Uh, Ivy growing here on the entrance drive and keep that maintained. Now when you come up here, they had, believe it or not, large birch trees across the front of this house. Uh, wrong plant, wrong place. Uh, those were taken out and um, these trellises were here, but uh, they weren't very, um, they're just sitting here and I like to use uh, climbing hydrangea, you may have seen that in another video. And one of the reasons I like climbing hydrangea is this right here. Gorgeous, gorgeous blooms this time of year. This is the first week of June. So they'll bloom, you know, for a week or two here. They've got dark green foliage. And I, do, I did originally train these <laughs> to go up these trellises. These are about three years old. This is the second phase of the garden renovation. First was this island over here, um, and then this was the second phase. But these crime island trains are great. We've got daylilies across the bottom. We do all their annuals. We pre-plant these in um, April, and then our vendor keeps them in the greenhouse and uh, grows them on for us, and they look fantastic. We're going over this side, same thing. We've got trellises, and I can see this side gets a little more shade so as we go up here, this last hydrangea is the thinnest one um, because it gets the least amount of sun. You can see the perfect one is the second one that gets sun almost all afternoon. Uh, we have a group of rabbits here that are intent on destroying the garden. So I do apply a uh, liquid fence to this. Uh, depends on how much rain we get, but at least every two weeks. And these hydrangea do uh, have a fighting chance. Over on this side, I'm going to do a little more garden renovation in here. We used to put big annual geraniums in there, about 15 or 20 of them. They were absolutely gorgeous. The year that we weren't there, somebody planted some other geraniums. That are, I consider them invasive, so we're going to be taking those out. And then replanting this strip all in here. Got great Japanese painted ferns. If you like ferns, these Japanese painted ferns are just gorgeous. And they'll get 10, 12 inches tall. They're not invasive. They don't spread by stoloniferous runners like a lot of uh, ferns. Well, a lot of ferns are clump growing, but they do spread, but these do not. We've got little lamb hydrangea in here and hosta. And like I said, I do have to spray those a lot to keep the deer from eating those. We've got butterfly milkweed. Uh, right here, but this, um, we had planted more and for some reason they died out in this strip right here. So I'm gonna be adding some more perennials in here this month. black base elderberry, azalea in a pot that I cut back last week because it was about six feet wide and needed to be pruned. 
up here you got boxwoods and hydrangea and the same thing in this strip right here i'm gonna be adding a lot more perennials Sean, i always put geraniums in here annual geraniums clematis on this wrought iron obelisk that i put in here and then some great blue hydrangeas around it like i said this client's a little bit different than most a lot of people like privacy on this road um, but they had a patio i designed a patio in here and have a great company uh, that I work with that does the heavy lifting all the and fantastic work on hardscaping and they put a glider in here They can sit out here They're really out of view of everybody walking by but they can see what's going on Got a black lace elderberry behind that And then uh, obviously old-school um, uh, Ivy growing up on this home gorgeous gorgeous home Probably built in the 1920s, 1930s. Slate roof. All right, let's go back to the uh, new side gardens. All right, these are new plantings this year. Um, I worked with a company that was doing the hardscaping back there that, like I said, once again, does a lot of the heavy lifting that I no longer want to do. And they uh, did this great patio uh, when I wasn't working here last year. And it turned out fantastic. We've got catmen in here. What people don't understand is the sun will hit this brick when the sun's up high enough. Um, originally, the other company's gonna put host and stuff in here, but this planting bed, because of the radiant heat coming off this brick, might hit 120 degrees, 110 degrees, when it's 75 degrees out. Um, just the radiant heat buildup of that block. So I had them switch that to catmint, working out fantastic. They also put this large flagstone walk in and then sod it around it. This used to be all mulch back here. They had a place set here. All their kids are now uh, young adults um, in high school, college, out of college. So it's time to get rid of the play set. And uh, Jesus and his crew built this fantastic trellis overlooking none other than Lake Michigan. Over in this section, uh, this is going to be a garden renovation. I'm going to be putting a lot of uh, classic hydrangeas in here. Well, not classic, but hydrangeas uh, to kind of blend in with this architecture here. And then once again, these annuals put geraniums here. Um, this give constant blooms. I'm always deadheading these, but this gives them a lot of interest. You can see, we had a party here. She said uh, that it was fantastic sitting here on this deck. So Jesus, of course, did a great job with this patio and trellis. And just today, I put an owl up here, which I've used before on a client's property on their dock. I had to put three of these on a client's dock because it seemed like every Thursday or Friday, the seagulls would have a party and then I'd have to go power wash it. And it was tough on the schedule, just wasting money for the clients. <laughs> so I found these uh, owls on Amazon and put us up here. And we'll see if that keeps the birds from uh, having a party here and having to clean off this patio furniture. And when I came here, this part had been landscaped. So we've kind of been maintaining this, adding to it, trying to get it healthy. We do a lot of root drenches with cold pressed Norwegian sea kelp, some liquid carbon. Um, all organic products and the plants are responding great to this. Let me walk down here and look back. So now you can see how this is a great addition to the south end of this property. And they have this large patio that faces the lake. Um, but this is a great use of space. The great thing about landscaping is it's not like a house where you have to do everything at once. I think these clients have probably lived here for six or seven years now and as they found how they use stuff they've landscaped or done work accordingly got some nice hydrangeas in here some flagstone walls built in here got a couple plantings here large flat not large but large enough turf area up here where kids uh, can play catch frisbee whatever got a planting of well, let me go up here. I really love this garden. Um, one, because it's on Lake Michigan. So it's usually nice and cool when I'm working here. Um, 
great scenery when I'm working here. But uh, now we're on the lake side of the house, which people often call the front when they have a lake house. They go, that's the front of the house. No, in my opinion, the front of the house is what faces the road. So with all my clients that have lake homes, we call it roadside and lakeside when we're referring to what we're gonna be doing for the client. Um, but here, uh, I said this existing patio was already here. Stonework, these are actually lights. You can do these annual containers here. Now use the year and a half that we were not working on this project, they unfortunately sheared these, which is the worst thing you can do for any use. People do it all the time, especially here in the Midwest. I like a more informal growth. So we did a big root drench on these, we're letting them push, and then we'll let them look a little bit more natural. Worst thing you can do, like I said, is shear anything because it's dead inside. Come down here, now we got this row of boxwoods. Once again, I inherited this. Uh, boxwoods do not like full hot sun. They like to be northeast side of a house, at least here in Wisconsin, and a little protected. So what I do to protect these is I do a root drench at least once or twice a year to really make sure they're getting the nutrients they need. And then in the winter, I do an anti-desiccant. Spray an anti-desiccant on this to slow the evaporation loss through the leaves. And you can see, with the exception of a few plants here, these boxwoods are healthy. And uh, I'm not sure if they sheared those the year, year and a half I was gone. So we got this great patio, multiple levels. That's one thing you, when you're designing gardens or patios, they don't all have to be one level. There's the level I'm standing on, there's the mid-level with a nice patio table, and then another level up even higher. And then these annual containers. And I do use Moisture Manager, not a sponsor, but uh, have used Moisture Manager products forever on these, which cuts down on your watering by 60, 70%. These things are really wet because you've had so much rain. Um, and sitting here, what's not to like, right? Oh, right down there, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but is a barge of some type heading down to Milwaukee. Not much wind today. Might be a good day to sail, but uh, it's always peaceful. I always make sure that I take at least five minutes, 10 minutes every time that I work on this project to just sit here on the supper patio where I'll show you the lower level, which is a workout when you're chronologically gifted by like myself. Let me go back here a little bit. I just see that I've got a dandelion to pull. But this is another great planting. I'm not a big fan of ground covers because you get grasses established in them. Very hard to get rid of the grasses. But um, I've done extensive root drenching with this vinca and it is loving life. It's, it's a dark, rich green plant. I keep it trimmed off the steps and I'm gonna come back here after I shoot this video and pull that thin line out of there. Once again, great stonework here. And it's nice to get the grass just established like this in between the stones. I'm not gonna walk all the way down there, but I'll give you a view. That's about a 30 or 40, maybe a 50 foot drop. I'll have to check that out with my drone someday to see what the difference in elevation is. But there's a uh, path down here, and there's a gentleman that comes and cuts the grass and goes down there. And they haven't developed that because it's not a primary use for them. There's a nice fire pit down there. How the original owner of this house got a basketball court and concrete poured down there and an old putting green. Not sure how they got all that stuff down there because that has to be a beast to, this is your only access. Got some nice stone wall here, leaning a little bit forward. Um, that may have to be addressed in years to come. But the garden and the, uh, the annuals just really make this a nice lake side of the house. I feel like I'm walking into a hole here at the turf if it seems a little wobbly. We can sit here on the jacuzzi, 
they can enjoy it. Over here, we got obviously privacy from their neighbors. This arbor by the hedge. So once you get a, a garden established, it's really not that hard to maintain it. Um, if you got too many plants planted together, you got the wrong plants in the wrong place, sun that likes shade, shade that likes sun, then gardens are just a nuisance to maintain. But like I said, I inherited the gardens here on the, on the lake side of the house and we've been nourishing them to keep them healthy. And then Cheryl and I completely renovated the front gardens and I'll continue to do so. Um, once they said, if this is my office every day, I'll take it. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, remember to lead with love and kindness.